Welcome aboard Free Dive with Seapoint Digital, your go-to podcast for deep dives into the world of digital marketing. I'm Christy. And I'm Anna Lynn. Your hosts navigating through the currents of growth, strategy, and innovation in the digital realm. We're going to talk. We're going to laugh. It's going to be a good time. Let's dive in. Welcome back to the Free Dive Podcast. Thank you for being here again. Today we have as a special guest, Bill Cotrera, of course. This is my second time already on the podcast. Thank you for being here again. You know, I've enjoyed being on the podcast the first time so much that I was like, maybe I really do like podcasting. Can I tell you something? What? Your episode last time has done the best so far. That's amazing. I don't think that that's any coincidence. See, secretly... I've always thought people wanted to listen to me talk, Uh and that's why I tell long, rambly stories. Uh And, you know, the fact that you're all listening to my podcast, um, it just validates that. So I'm I'm sorry. It's terrible and good for your ego, I think. Yes, that... (laughs) I'm like, I talk a lot, but it seems like somebody wants to listen. People want, like, like the statistics were, like, absurdly high for your episode. Now, to be fair, we were talking about AI. Yes. So maybe it wasn't as much people wanted to listen to me. Yes. As versus that listen, talking about AI is kind of an exciting thing And we thing have to talk a plan about. for that, to test that. We are going to, we are going to A-B test that and talk about AI without you. Ooh, I and like that. And then we're going to see how this episode does. And we're not talking about AI today with you. So. so, hey, if you're listening to the podcast and you're like, what type of actionable insights do I get from marketing from, you know, spending the time listening to this? That was our first one. A, B, test everything. That's right. Is it Bill or is it AI? The only way you're going to know, A, B, testing. <laughs> Please let us know. Yes. <laughs> anyway, let's tell them what we are talking about today. Yeah, what are we talking about? Today we are talking about uh, relationships with our clients, which was someone wrote in and suggested that as a topic. So that's why we're going to talk about it. I, I love that topic as well. As an agency owner, mm-hmm. uh, it's something that I give a lot of thought to. Yes. Um, because, you know, from my perspective, I set the standard or I set the tone as an agency and how we relate to our clients. Yeah. And also kind of the tone of our agency as a whole. And it's not accidental. Right. Um, I think sometimes might wonder if we're just kind of winging it which sometimes I feel like we're winging it. Uh, But a lot of how uh, our value, our relationship with our clients, uh, it's it's, it's very uh, deliberate in that sense. So just a little plug here. We are coming up on our 13th anniversary here at Seapoint. So this is a bit of a celebratory thing on that. So 13 years in business. Seapoint's a teenager this year. The, it, we are a teenager. It's a big yep. deal. I can't wait for Seapoint to be old enough to drive. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's a lot of years in business. Yeah. And it is a lot of um, a lot of changes along the way in a lot of ways. But you've seen and you've had many, we've had many, we've had some clients that have, we've had the whole, like kind of the whole time or most of the time, but then we've had some clients that, you know, have come and gone throughout the way. So so let's start by telling us what you've noticed, uh, in transition with different clients. Like what's been something that you've learned about yourself or your company, um, through the years with accepting and losing clients. Let's start with that. Yeah, so I'm going to go all the way back, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, Something that's always been really profound to me in thinking about running an agency is, so the agency, before C-Point was started, I worked for an agency called Say It Social, run by this really brilliant agency owner by the name of Ty Downing. Mm -hmm. Um, Just super smart guy, very insightful. And I remember being down in Wilmington. Uh, I was down there for some work meetings with him, some client things uh, in my early days. Uh, And we were sitting, having a drink after work, relaxing, just kind of talking about the state of marketing and agency life. And, And Ty was a great mentor. And Ty told me that you, it, and it's always stuck with me, is that it costs so much more to get a new client mm. than it does to retain an existing client. Yeah. 
then he was talking about at the time we were working with a financial company. Uh, they were throwing these lavish parties to get new investors, and you know they were the the cost per acquisition of a new client was really really high. Mm. And you know he he made the point that they learned from that that it's far more cost effective to take care of your current clients yeah. than it is to go out and try to get new clients. And that's always stuck with me because it, as a person and as an agency and what I've tried to impart to C-Point is, is C-Point is our personal reputation, how we deal with clients, right? Definitely, definitely. Um, and that's who we are anyways as, as, as a company, as people that work at the company. Uh, but even more than that, it just makes sense for take care of your current clients, um, and that's the number one thing you can do to have an effective business, um, an effective agency. And I and I, I know we're in marketing, but that really goes across to any business. To any business, like think about it. How much does it cost for you to get a new client? You know, different different um, industries. It's going to be completely different, right? So. Um, some companies are far more transactional. Someone buys something he wants there and you may never see them again. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for the majority, like you're going to have reoccurring revenue through a client. You you have them, you know, maybe it's project based. They're going to come back to you for the project needs. Um, they're purchasing something from you. They have that sense of brand loyalty that you as a company care about them, that you take a lot of pride in what you do. They're going to come back in a shop. They're going to also refer other people to you at that point. Right. Um, so that's always something that's really stuck with me at C Point. We don't do a lot of business development. Uh, you know, other agencies our size have somebody on staff, um, BDR, um, doing business development, uh, a salesperson. They're buying lists. They're they're being really aggressive in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done thirteen years. We've done very very little of that. Almost all of the work that's come into C Point has all been inbound. Mm -hmm. um, as far as People who have found us online, people who worked at another company that hired us, and then as they went on to a new position, they were like, "We should call C Point." They were awesome. Uh, other people in the industry who known us and know what we're about, uh, referrals and um, networking, networking things like that. Yeah. So I do think what's really interesting. So marketing agencies specifically, and especially marketing agencies that have a connection to software as a service. Uh, type providers, there is a desire or there's a training or kind of a mantra that they've been given, especially we find this with a lot of times with agencies that work with HubSpot, um, they're always being trained to upsell. Yeah. So that idea like software, like, okay, you've bought our software, you're paying X amount of dollars, uh, what can we upsell you to, to more software? Mm -hmm. And that same philosophy, I think, where they're talking to these software companies that are constantly like, you can make more revenue from your clients. Mm -hmm. You can you can increase revenue streams from your existing clients. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem with that is those situations don't always have your clients' best interests at heart, right? Yes. And I think for the majority of clients, they can discern when you're trying to sell them on a billable or sell them on a software yeah. uh, versus going to them and saying, hey, this is a solution. I think that ultimately is going to meet your business objections, uh, not objections, uh, uh, your business goals um, that you, you know, this is going to make you more money. This is going to care for a pain point with customer service, things like that. And um, who would you really rather have taking care of you? Right. And so the problem is, not the problem, but when you're working with a company, you're working with an individual, uh, they can f very easily sense when you've got their best interests at heart, right? Mm. Versus right. when you're just trying to sell them a software, or you're trying to increase your retainer with them, Definitely. and you're trying to upsell them. Mm. So if someone always feels that they're being upsold or that like their marketing partner or, or again, any industry, like whatever you provide, that you're goal is always just to maximize the transactional value of that relationship, mm -hmm. uh, you no longer have that uh, relationship with the client. Mm -hmm. if, if you're just, if the client knows that you're just looking at them with dollar signs of what's the most I can leverage out of my relationship with you versus 
I care about your business. I care about your needs. I care about you as a person, your company to make help you grow and thrive. Uh, that's going to be very apparent. Um, and, I, and I see that all the time, especially like great examples, HubSpot. Agencies yeah. that focus on HubSpot, uh, they get so much training on this idea of sell software, sell software. And HubSpot, again, as a software company, that's their primary goal. They want to u- utilize and leverage agencies that are working with them to sell the most amount of software. And I, I'm picking on HubSpot, but there's lots of other software uh, in the industry that are very similar. Like, hey, how can you be our partner, sell our software? Mm-hmm. Um, and in, it, there's always some type of commission or some some type of thing for the agency uh, that pushes them to want to do that. But they don't stop to be like, hey, is this really is this piece of software really going to solve my client's needs, yeah. or is this tactic that I'm trying to upsell my client uh, really going to care for their needs? Yeah, um, I think that's a big thing. I, I think another thing too is there is a fine balance uh, by adding value to your clients, but also not having uh, scope creep. So here's the balance. Um, You know, you're working with a client and sometimes clients want additional work that's may not be directly tied to the deliverables you've agreed on. Yeah. So here's the balance with scope creep is the tendency would be very much like, well, that's an add on and that's an upsell. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So how do you decide? Right. So, you know, be discerning, right? So we think about that of adding value. Like if you had a customer and you're going to spend money on maybe sending them a thank you, thank you Christmas gift or, you know, like end of year, like that's pretty standard in the, in the company world, right? Mm-hmm. Or other add-ons, right? So mm-hmm. if we go and we see a client, we're going to take them out for lunch, we're going to take them out for dinner to show our appreciation for their Keep the relationship strong. Right. And that's standard, right? Yeah. Like any agency would do that. If you were going to go visit a client, you know, show that type of hospitality and appreciation for working with them. So you think about that, like in a day-to-day business, right? If you're willing to go that way and and, and express your appreciation in those ways um, by not being so particular about scope creep, again, the client knows when they're getting better service, um, and you as an agency are going to know, is this a case of the clients just trying to get more out of you versus there just might be an immediate need um, to care for something. If they discern that you're willing to go and do that extra work and that you care about them as a client, and this isn't about just like what is the X at the end of the retainer, mm-hmm. uh, that's the brand loyalty, right? Yeah. So that goes back again to customer retention. If if a client feels, well, what am I really getting out of my relationship with C-Point? To stay. To, to stay. not move on, to, right. to really appreciate them. And and so that's, you know, like, would is it worth spending maybe for us $5,000 to get a new client? Mm-hmm. Or is it worth it for me to spend that time um, and taking care of our clients and going above and beyond our clients' expectations uh, to care for them, and we keep that client for another five, ten years. Well, so then I, you know, how how do I prevent myself from being taken advantage of then? What if I have a client who, you know, maybe I've had for years and they just always want the add-ons for free? At what point do you say... That's enough. They're constantly wanting those things that are out of scope and I've been giving them for years. Like how do you then discern like enough is enough and then keep their relationship? Right. So I guess that's more of a case of auditing that relationship. Again, business relationships are two ways. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep your clients happy. But on the same hand, you need to understand as an agency owner if a client is a good fit. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the vast majority of clients I work with, it's not really a case of them trying to get extra or, you know, they're trying to they're trying to take care of a, a, a business need. Right. Um, and they're looking to you for help um, and they're, li- they're looking for assistance. So if every time they're looking for assistance and you're just like, well, that's, that's an add-on, 
Um, they're going to stop looking to you for assistance. Versus you very easily understand if it's that's the situation or the situation is a client is trying to end around your retainer relationship. Mm -hmm. And that usually can be seen when it's time to, uh, you might have to renegotiate, like if you're on a contract terms with Mm -hmm. them, uh, understanding like at that point, if they're trying to just lower costs Mm -hmm. and get the cheapest service possible that they can. And, and, you know, we've had that over the years, clients that have been that way. It's just more of a case of trying to, um, aggressively negotiate in that regard. Um, but then the question is like, is that client really worth it at that point long term? And so, you know, same t- token, like sometimes relationships with clients and you realize that's not the best fit for the agency. You're doing a lot of work. The work isn't appreciated. Or it, I think usually in those situations too, usually what you have happen is it always coincides with a lack of trust or with the experience of the agency. Mm, that's interesting. So what, what will happen a lot of times in those same circumstances is a client will then also really start trying to micromanage and not trust your insights. Into, so there's warning signs. Yeah. And then, you know, I we've had to part ways with clients, you know, as far as it's, it's, it's always a difficult thing to say, hey, we have a client, let's bring revenue in for the agency, but, you know, it's not, a, it's not a good fit because the amount of extra work, whether it's, again, as you said, people adding things on or because of how their interactions with the agency is causing a slowdown in um, process. Activity. Yeah. productivity, mm-hmm. um, morale in the office. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if, if workers are feeling super underappreciated or super frustrated. frustrated because of a client's interactions with them, mm-hmm. then it's a good time to look at, like, is this the best relationship? So that process for you kind of looks like you you said like an audit. So it's an audit kind of of how much, how much money is kind of being drained here. Uh, What's the audit look like of of how it's affecting your companies, your staff, their morale, their pro- productivity, and then and then what if you decide this is not working? What do you, what have you found is like the best way to say how do you, like I'm a business owner, I'm an agency owner. How do I cut it off appropriately? I, I usually at that point will try to find a new solution for them. Okay. So usually in those situations, it's it's a case of, um, you know, this isn't a good fit for C-Point, mm-hmm. you know, as far as we're obviously not meeting your needs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to I wouldn't say you're not meeting our needs. Yeah. Um, it's not you. It's you. <laughs> um, it's you. But, it, you know, in those situations, still like trying to, you know, hey, is there a better solution? Like maybe they need a different type of, maybe it's not an agency relationship they're looking for. Maybe they need somebody in-house. Right. Maybe they need just that person who's kind of in beds with them, you know, like looking at the situations. Maybe there's another agency that's a better fit, Mm -hmm. uh, making recommendations on that. It's a specific kind of breakup. It's a breakup and being like, but you need this man instead. Yes. (laughs) But you do. You want to part ways as as kindly as possible. You don't want it to be ugly. Right. And when that does have to happen. Exactly. So, again, you know, we're, we're talking about this in a podcast format, uh, what lessons we've learned at C-Point. And obviously the people mm-hmm. who are listening to us, you know, it's not all marketing people. Like we probably work in other industries. And so, like, thinking about, like, well, what do I take away from this, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So how does this help me marketing? So I would say the biggest thing to look at is look at what what is your average cost per acquisition of a new client? Like how how much do you have to expend both, you know, whether it's financial and advertising or, you know, the time, your personal time, employees' time, you know, as far as, you know, do you have someone who's doing cold calls, you know, whatever tactics you're using, right? So figure out like I spent X amount of dollars, I get X amount of clients, um, figure out what your cost per acquisition is. And then the next thing to figure out is what is your average cost per client lifetime value? So again, it might seem like a pain to 
spend, again, $5,000 on a client. Um, but if that client's lifetime value is $100,000, $500,000, a million dollars, like that's that's completely reasonable. And especially depending on what your, your margins are, you yeah. know, your profitability yeah. margins for your company. Um, and then again, for those clients, if you can increase a client's engagement with you from a five-year period to a 10-year period, like what's that cost look like? So again, if it's a million dollar client, um, it costs you $5,000 to uh, acquire a client like that for that five-year period. If you're spending an additional $5,000 of company resources during that period of time to build brand loyalty with your client, then you're you're acquiring them for the next five years at the same cost mm. uh, that you would have. So it's a lot of kind of crunching numbers and looking at is it is it more than evening out to make it worth it. Exactly. And so the same token, like if you're working with a client and maybe the cost per acquisition is $5,000 for a new client in that space, but then you're realizing that work you're doing and that profitability, Mm -hmm. um, that margin is shrinking and shrinking. And so, you know, is it, it could be more cost effective to go out and spend that money in business development to find that new client Mm -hmm. um, if that relationship with a, you know, current client is, um, it's not profitable in that regard. The other thing to think about too in that cost per acquisition and cost of lifetime value is also always look at what is the value of referrals from a client. Okay, that's a good point. So like you might see like lifetime value, especially if you're, let's say you're in an industry with very low margins and in those low margins uh, you're thinking, well, I, it was a high cost per acquisition for this for this client, you know, my margins aren't that great. So, you know, what's the profitability here? But again, if that client knows your work is amazing and they recommend three, four more people, well, then you've cost, you've lowered your cost for acquisition for new clients based on those testimonials. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, Their margin may not be that high. Their lifetime value may not be that high. Uh, But if they're assisting you with business growth in your company, then really, you know, you need to attribute some of that other um, income to that initial client and and factor that in in your acquisition of that client. Yeah, that brings up a good point um, because it makes me think about some of my Matterport clients and how sometimes I may only get small jobs from them, but then they will be clients that refer me to other other clients and then I will get more and more jobs from them. So yeah, to that point, I've experienced that myself in getting more clients. So that is a really good point and something to consider in the overall audit. Yeah. Um, And then I think the other thing that we've talked about before Mm -hmm. off camera is like the connection about our company social. Yes. In that and, and and what we do, so it's 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 kind of funny because I think people who know me personally mm-hmm. um, and also see our social media yeah. probably have this understanding that Bill's this goofball, and you've seen Bill and his odd sense of humor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm far too Michael Scott like at times and then like and then I go back and look at it and I, I cringe right <laughs> um, but you guys also know when it comes to like running a business I, I I'm very dialed there's in there's different sides to, to you yep to right. all of us yep um, but we look at social so I was I was listening to your first podcast the first episode where you and Annalyn were talking about this mm-hmm. like it's hard to express uh, in a Instagram reel or a TikTok about using automated bidding in Google ads or how the Google Merchant Center works. In an interesting, in an interesting way. way where <laughs> people are not just going to use that to fall asleep. Yes. Maybe I should do a podcast just talking about things and that we could call it white noise uh-huh. and then people could sleep to it. Uh huh. Yeah. Pl- review. It would just get so many plays. It would get so many plays. Maybe that's why my videos get more plays. People are using it to fall to sleep too as the whitest noise they can find. Uh-huh. Yeah. You're welcome, people. If, if I'm solving insomnia, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. But no, um, 
And so our social tends to be a little bit goofy. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do funny things around the office. Yeah. Um, and we do funny things anyways around the office. It's not just because we're like on Instagram and all of a sudden we're like, oh, let's let's pretend like we're a fun place to work. It's just who we are. That's who we are. We're yeah. always kind of goofing around yeah. and, and, and keeping levity in the office. Mm-hmm. Um, but like expressing that, um, I'm going to say something really, really cynical for a second. Okay. It's, 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 it's much harder to when you have to say like, hey, I'm working with this agency, another agency is pitching me, another agency wants to take the business and maybe they're promising grand things, right? Mm-hmm. It's much harder to walk away from that agency that's made you laugh. Yeah. And and that you think about the personality traits of those people that you work with, yeah, right? That you have this like humanization experience with yeah right and so that's the problem with it we're a digital agency right Mm -hmm. um very few of our clients are local Mm -hmm. very few of our clients will come in here to the office for meetings or we'll go meet with them most of them are on the other side of the country yeah um you know we have zoom meetings with them Mm -hmm. we you know do site visits and Mm -hmm. all the things a normal agency would but you know, as far as building that rapport with clients and understanding who we are, I think that that window of like, you know, seeing those kind of goofy things that we're doing on social, seeing the personalities, understanding that we like to pick on Tim now, you know, all that you know, kind of in, mm-hmm. in, in the office, I think gives people that insight of like, this is my marketing agency. Yeah. And so how have you seen that play in like in real time? with our clients and for you showing the humanness of you and your staff directly to any of your clients? So I think the most interesting story to me in all this and thinking about like what's the value of of entertaining in social media, mm-hmm. entertaining and educating in social media and podcasts and things like that, right, mm-hmm. is when we had our 10-year anniversary. So at the time, our creative director... Uh, Gretchen Coburn, fabulous Gretchen, mm-hmm. um, not with us anymore, but just wonderful person. She had always wanted to do the Dundies. Yes. And, you know, great lover of the office and seeing all the parallels between personalities. Again, I might be Michael Scott at times, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, but seeing that, like, she, that was her idea, right? She always wanted to do, like, the, the Dundies. And, she put so much work and effort into throwing a red carpet. Listen, you like to give her all credit okay, for that uh, night. Yeah. I equally planned the You, e- Christy, equally <laughs> planned it. I'm getting myself in trouble. I'm, I'm a video recording and I'm just like talking <laughs> crap about my current employees. Christy, Gretchen, amazing things. They even made a chili sign so we could say I felt I feel God in this chilies tonight. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was it, it was an amazing evening. For morale, mm-hmm. you know, I think everyone was super excited about it. Yeah. It really made them feel great about the work they did. Like black tie, like black tie gowns, yeah. the whole thing. Hopefully, uh, Christy will share some pictures if you're watching this on the YouTube or I have a YouTube highlights video. Yeah, no, I'm saying like you should yeah. overlay on that just mm-hmm. to show people. Mm-hmm. Um it was not a necessary work thing. It was a lot of fun <laughs> and it was silly and, you know, we had the pointy awards like the Dundies and they were like the sil- – they were silliest names of, you know, awards. We all got awards. Everyone yeah. got awards. It was, you know – Trophies. We trof- made, trophies made trophies with real plaques. They set up a stage in the parking lot of our office building. Rented chairs. Rented chairs. Put an actual red carpet down. And my favorite thing in the middle of it, right, we're getting this all set up. And we have a chiropractor in our business and he drove around the back of the building <laughs> and he was just like, what is wrong with those people next door to me in that marketing agency? We did not care. We, we did not care. Um, but so, you know, it, it was something I sanctioned. People in the office felt really strongly about it. Um, and it was primarily done for morale. Mm-hmm. You know, we shared a lot of it on social media. Mm-hmm. Somebody reached out to me in a professional setting on LinkedIn and said, you're the company I want to work with. 
If Someone a, you never met, never didn't met. Know at all. I, it wasn't even like a friend of a friend, and we had this connection, and they heard about like they saw that, and they said, "Seapoint Digital is the company we want to work with." Mm-hmm. Because they could see our human side, they could see our sense of humor, uh, they could see the creativity in, in doing something that silly, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't do it as a promotional no. activity. Um, and so that's the thing, like that humanization of understanding who we are as an agency mm-hmm. went a long way of people um, ki- kind of getting a glimpse into the creative process here at Point. Mm-hmm. Now that said, right, new client acquisition, um, you know, what we do on a day-to-day basis with other kind of quirky things around the office, it really does two parts, right? It builds morale. Uh, people love working at Seapoint because we have those those things. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the other side of it, it gives people that are our clients who may not come into our office on a regular basis, uh, they might be at a Zoom meeting and they only see me or maybe their account manager in a very like, hey, we're going over this report. Here's your metrics. Here's your numbers. Here's your growth um, in that concept. Uh, But it gives them a chance to like passively get a little bit understanding of who are the people that are they're working with um, a little bit more fleshed out about their personalities, a little bit more fleshed about who Seapoint is as an agency. And that in turn builds brand loyalty, right? So if you can relate to this person that you really maybe have met once or twice, but you feel like you know them, uh, again, other agencies that are trying to take their business because everyone, that's that's just the nature of it. Agencies are always knocking on people's doors, cold calling, um, trying to move business. That's just another added element of why they have loyalty towards C-Point. It builds trust. Exactly. Right? So what would you say if, you know, I'm maybe I'm a business owner, maybe I have my own business or agency, but I'm not, I'm not like you guys. I'm not goofy and silly and I don't want to be dancing on TikTok. That's not who I am fundamentally. How do I... How do I show my humanness or my company's humanness? Maybe we're a little bit more shy. You know, how do we do that to the same level you guys do without your personality? Um, That's a great question. And and I would say the reason why we do those things, that's because of our personality, right? Mm -hmm. So like lean into what is good about your personality. Are you an incredibly punctual person? Um, and or incredibly detail oriented, um, you know, find ways to leverage to express that that's what you're doing. You know, mm-hmm. point those things out to your client, you know, help them appreciate that. Yeah. Um, you know, find other ways to, you know, help your clients and your prospective clients to see what makes you special and your service special. Mm. So, you know, for us, it's, you know, the kind of the quirkiness of who we are. Um, but a lot of times we also pivot to like, hey, here's some awards we've won. Uh, here's here's the really good work we've done, right? So in those same instances, whatever you're doing as an occupation or your business or along those lines, like how can you highlight those things in, in not a braggy way, but just like help convey to people like this is this is your personality or this is your dedication or this is why you love what you do. Yeah. And I think that's really what it is. It's like speak to the passion of what you do uh, both in a digital format and then in person and your customers will appreciate that. Play to your strengths exactly. and highlight them. You don't have to be fake or anybody that you're not but really showcase and, and and I think that comes down to it too as far as like understand are you doing this because this is the authentic you or yeah. are you doing it as self-promotion? Yeah. yeah. So – Because people can tell the difference. Yeah, exactly. Like spend five minutes on LinkedIn. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like it's like – like you read some stuff and you're just like, oh man, that is that's uh-huh. you're, you're 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 laying it on heavy. Like, yeah, yeah I get yeah. it. You think you're awesome, yeah, right? Yeah, you know that's not what we were saying to do. Is like go out to LinkedIn and just start bragging mm-hmm. or humble bragging about stuff on you know. Yeah, it's very but annoying. But what we're saying is, you know, as far as like highlight your authentic achievements, highlight the things that are like the core values of your company. That's going to draw in the client base that you want anyway. Yeah, it's going to go a long way of, you know, talking to who you are. Um, and then again, like those, we go, went back to that, like, hey, sometimes you have to talk about clients that may not be good fits. Yeah. Um, you know, like a company that doesn't want a quirky um, agency, you know, they're going to look at our stuff and be like, 
yeah, that's not what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then we're just going to solve that problem ahead of time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, versus a client who's like, hey, I love what they do. You know, like some of the aspects, like we say goofy, right? But like, look how we support mothers in our office. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we support families with, with difficult, not difficult, but like with with special needs. Yeah. Um, with their, you know, with their children or family situations. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big way that we've supported. Um, we've supported, uh, you know, other things along those lines. Like, you know, people are going to pick up on that as part of our values. Mm-hmm. And, um, our client, and our clients, I think, can see that and know that. And I think we have built relationships. I mean, very often we'll enter meetings and be able to just chat about what's going on in football or they'll know about the last party we did and laugh about it and whatever. And we couldn't have those conversations with clients that didn't have appreciation for that stuff. And I think it creates much more of a, an easygoing, friendly relationship with those clients. And like you said, it creates long lasting relationships. And I think that's part of the longevity of C point. So I think that, you know, what we're talking about at the beginning about like client retention, right? Mm-hmm. And then being authentic of who you are. Mm-hmm. Look at C points. Um, well, I'm saying look at, but for us, we know C point that the vast majority of our clients have been with us for five plus years. Yeah. Um, we may only bring on one or two clients a year. Yeah. We don't need to bring on 30 clients mm-hmm. and then hope that five of them stick. Mm-hmm. Because we know if clients are going to be loyal to us. They know we do good work. They know that we're good people um, and that we care about them and their company as much as we care about what we're doing. Um, that's the success of C-Point. Where I've seen so many agencies just flame out, especially kind of in that HubSpot ecosystem. Yeah. You know, they do all these things that they think on paper are right as far as like, hey, I got a salesperson who's really aggressive, trying to go out and get clients. I'm doing outbound calls. Mm. I'm doing all of this effort and I'm building, rapidly building this client base and I'm building my MMR to be like these like really impressive numbers for MMR. But that underlying of what the agency doesn't support that, mm-hmm. well, then you're going to have incredible churn. Yeah. So it goes back to, hey, if I spent $5,000 on customer acquisition and I only keep them for a year, like the, the value of that customer is not um, because you didn't support that customer. You didn't provide them what they needed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I see so many agencies in the HubSpot, again, HubSpot, as, as I'm not picking on HubSpot here, but just kind of in that ecosystem of marketing agencies that rely on a blueprint or a game plan and have really relied on that. Yeah. And, and that growth model, um, there are some who've done wonderful and they've grown and scaled and, and, and are able to deliver and build those relationships. Uh, but there are much fewer than the ones that just kind of either had to change their model or they've, they've gone under because they just, you know, the clients don't realize, the clients realize that there's not a relationship there. Mm-hmm. It's transactional. Right. And, you know, when, oh, we, we've got you now. Well, Great. Versus we're going to put a low-level account manager and you're never going to see me as the agency owner again or you're never going to, you know, have that rapport with somebody. You're going to get a report every month and that's about it. Yeah. Um, and I think that, again, it goes back to what you put into your company, but more importantly, what you put into your clients and their vision for their companies mm-hmm. is what's going to, at the end of the day, talk to the longevity of your company and your instability. Mm -hmm. So key takeaways from all of this for um, keeping, keeping clients, losing clients, taking care of your clients, what would, what would be the highlights? I think the highlight is love your clients, right? Mm -hmm. Love the people who've trusted your company um, and, and they invested in you. They trusted you for whatever service you provide reward that trust Mm -hmm. with exceptional service, um, exceptional deliverables, added value when they don't expect it um, to really kind of show that. And that's going to go so much farther than running, putting a billboard up or or an ad campaign or hiring somebody to spam people's inboxes. Mm -hmm. Um, That's going to be the number one indicator of a company growth. Excellent. Well, I feel like we've learned a lot, Bill. 
Another another fun day on the on the podcast. And another fun day on the podcast. Just free diving. Free diving. Free diving indeed. Yeah. Thank you for all of your insights there. All right. Thanks we for having me. Them. Thanks for having me on. All right. We'll see you next time. It's the end. No, it's not. It's There's more. There's always more. Don't be sad. You can catch our full video interviews on our YouTube channel. Come find us. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share with your friends so that we're not sad. And follow us on TikTok. And Instagram. It'll make your day happier, promise. And we'll know if you do. (laughs) Until next time.